And a happy homebrew Wednesday it is. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Got a couple things here. First thing first. Got some a surprise mail today. Now that we got a bit of a story. <laughs> My wife came home from work today and she uh, she brought this and she said, You gotta open this. I said, Well what is it? And she said, It's a it's a package. I'm like, oh cool. I said, Well what's what are you why are you interested in? And she says, Because it's it says it's makeup. <laughs> Can you <clears throat> Why would somebody be sending you makeup? I said, "Oh, it's it's not it's not makeup. It's um that's what that's just what we do when we send things. We lie about what's inside." So she says, "Well, open it." So I did. I opened it, and um, well, there is makeup inside. <laughs> There's the makeup. So they weren't lying. I'll tell you who this is from in just a moment. But along with the makeup, there was also. of goodies. So let's talk about this and see what we've got here. And I can justify the fact that there's booze in here even though it says makeup and I'll tell you how that's done. Okay. But whoops. But first we have the note that was sent. This came all the way from Australia. And uh, there's the note. I'm not going to try to read it to you because uh, he's got very fancy handwriting, and um, I need glasses to read it. But I did read it already. But I do have information about this, and this is from somebody by the name of Larney. And L-A-R-N-E-Y, all the way from Queensland, uh, Australia. Okay? So thank you, Larney. I, I forgot all about this. He sent me a message a while ago, and uh, I completely forgot that he was sending this. So... What we've got here is, well, let's get them back out. Well, I'll just read it. I've got a little note here. Um, it's a sample of Bundy Rum Royal Liqueur Coffee and Chocolate. That's the one with the white lid. It's 20% alcohol. And the Macadamia Nut Liqueur, 18% alcohol. Made locally in, in some, pa, in some uh, rum. Um, one of them is made in Castle Glen liqueurs here in Queensland. And the other one, the name is on the note there. And that's from Larney. So thank you all the way from Australia. And uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to um, give one of these a whirl. If, if you don't mind. So there's the makeup. My wife said, oh, goody, I needed new makeup. Well, I told you, you can't have it yet until I make the video. Then you, now you can have it. You can have it now. I'm sure I, I could probably use some, too. But anyway, so we'll... Um, last week, Homebrew Wednesday, I could use could have used some. That's some sort of a rash. So, so um, there's the two. Now, I'm, I'm going to try the, um, the, the, the nut one. The uh, macadamia nut nut one is the one I'm going to do right now and I believe this is the the dark cap so I'm going to set this one aside for later let's give this a uh, I haven't opened them yet so I'm very I mean pff, they're going to be uh, you know they're going to be amazing he said he said this is not something these aren't something I, I would be able to get so it's it, I'm tasting something very oh. <laughs> tasting something very rare Good God. Oh God. All right, let's, let's get on with it. I don't want this video to be too long. I couldn't find my pretty little shooter glass, so we're just using this thing. Now he said to, uh, he said don't, he said to, to sip on them, because they're nice. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, chug it, like, you know, suck it back. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, I can't even get it all in there, so. I don't want to spill it. So, oh, it's just every time I taste this stuff, I think I gotta, I gotta make this stuff. I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Well, cheers and thank you to Larney for sent for letting allowing me all the way in Canada to sample this this stuff here, which I know is alright. It's gonna be amazing. Let's do it. Cheers. Oh, 
ha. Ma. Mm. It's beautiful. It's very smooth. It's very it's it's sweet, but nice sweet. Liquor liqueur sweet. Mm. I should have said let's get double fisted, but well, anyway. We won't spoil this with that. <laughs> it's wonderful. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, sir. Good on you. Cheers. I don't want to move on to the rest of the video. I'm just content sitting here drinking this. Mm. Heavenly. Heavenly. A little bit of a burn going down, a little spicy. Sweet. Syrupy. And just heavenly. Ah, I'm a lucky man. Thank you, sir. Okay. Now, how to justify that it's that it's makeup? Well, he put makeup in the bag, so he wasn't lying about the fact that there's makeup in here. I assume that 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 uh, he's a viewer, and maybe maybe just maybe he learned a couple things from a few of my videos, and so by putting these in the the pouch, he's making up for what he learned from from me, maybe. So that's how you call it makeup. So we're not lying. That's how it works. That's how you... Thank you, Larnie. Cheers, dude. Thank you, buddy. The next thing I want to talk about is um, another topic that has to do with kegging. Now, I know some of you guys don't keg out there, so I, I, I apologize. But someday you will, and, and you'll take this information with you. I was reading on Brewer's Friend, which is a website um, that has a lot of cool stuff on it. And there's one particular section which I will put a link to in the com in the I say that every time in the box down below. Excuse me. Talking about kegging and whatnot, and you know what? For all you guys who do keg, what it says is that if you just keg if you keg a beer, let's say it's a Cooper's IPA, just for argument's sake, okay? So it's a coop sorry a Cooper's IPA, and you that keg gets gets emptied. It says that you don't have to, you don't necessarily have to clean that keg before you refill it if you're going to fill it with the same beer, the same style of beer. So if I'm going to put another Cooper's IPA in there, then all I would do is I would, you know, it's, it's in my refrigerator, obviously. You, you drink it when it's finished. You just leave the keg in the fridge or the keyser or whatever you've got. And when you're ready to keg your next batch, you, you take it out, you, you know, it's never been opened, it's, not, it's always just, it's sat there, untouched. You, you take it out, you pour out the stuff in the bottom, and you just siphon in your new beer, right then and there. And it's, it says that way you don't have to clean your keg any more than two or three, uh, you know, every two or three batches. And I'm like, woohoo, if I brew the same beer two or three times in a row, I don't even have to rinse it out. Because I'm like, why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's sanitized, right? Okay. It's the same beer that you're putting in. And as long as you didn't leave it for months on end, if you did, then don't, don't do this. You know, It's got to be pretty soon after you finish the keg that you would do this. Just refill it, lubricate your, your seals, put the lid back on, bleed it, boom, recarbonate it, and you're done. And that's good to know. Uh, now, it does also talk about cleaning regiments and procedures. And it also talks about um, OxyClean. Who was about to say Star Sand? Oh, ho, ho, that's a dirty word. <laughs> no, Star Sand's great stuff. But um, it talks about using OxyClean products as opposed to PBW products. Now, OxyClean is an oxygen based cleaner. You can buy the actual brand name OxyClean, or you can buy the you know, the uh, uh, generic brands. And this, this this topic covers, you know, not just kegging, but anything, any cleaning you have to do, bottles, carboys, uh, um, fermenting buckets or whatever, anything that needs a good cleaning, there's stains or whatever, the Krausen ring left a stain. You don't want to be scrubbing that stuff. 
You know, I've got like a bottle brush, you know, like a baby bottle brush. Uh, you don't want to be sitting there scrubbing that Krausen with that, with that brush if it's a plastic fermenter because you'll scratch it and you'll, you'll promote bacteria buildup, okay? So uh, OxyClean works great. It's half the price, if not even less the, of half the price than half the price of, of PBW, and it works it works wonderfully. And I'll I'll vouch for that. I will tell you right now that I have had um, some of the worst things happen inside one of my glass carboys. Um, I guess there was a little bit of water left in it just from when I cleaned it, and it was like a little tiny puddle of water left down there and there, and it evaporated over a month's time. And the minerals from the water deposited themselves on the inner side of the carboy, the glass. And I couldn't get them, I could not get these things off. I scrubbed them, I put the bottle brush in there, the big bottle brush. Um, water, star sand, everything, nothing worked. A little tiny bit of OxyClean, like just a, like a half a teaspoon, and about a gallon of water, tip it on its side, scrub it around, boom, took it right out. So. It, the stuff does work. If you're looking at buying a cleaning agent, not a sanitizing agent, but a cleaning agent for your equipment, I recommend an OxyClean product or, you know, a similar whatever, if it's not a brand name, as long as it's an oxygen-based cleaner. Preferably non-scented, but, you know, whatever. And just rinse it out really well. Rinse it out. Then the website says to leave it for 24 hours. I don't, I don't need to do that. I, you could, I guess. Um, you fill it up, you put a, a scoop full in, fill it up, the whole thing, five gallons or whatever, and leave it overnight. I, yeah, okay. I, I don't do that. I, I usually just, um, I put about a gallon of water in, a tiny bit, give it a good shake if it's a keg or a good uh, swirl. And I've got a sp soft sponge that I use if it's a, a fermenter that I can wipe around in there. And it does an absolutely amazing job. Now, it also does mention that if you've got very hard water, then you might have to use the PBW because the OxyClean doesn't work as well in hard water. But I've got standard, my water isn't soft. It's not really hard. It's, you know, somewhere in between, I guess. Um, and in, the, the OxyClean works beautifully, okay? So you have to figure out what you've got. Well, I'm, this is what I've got right here. Hmm. Hmm. Mm, mm, frigging, mm. Okay. <coughs> so, that's that. Um, so, OxyClean. Great product for cleaning your brewing equipment. And it's not that expensive. And it lasts a long time. And you get your what clothes white, too. <laughs> okay. So, um, that's that. The next thing I wanted to talk about is... Um, I know I, I keep putting off doing the Mr. Beer, but it's a good thing because one of my loyal viewers and, and a friend um, actually sent me an interview uh, that was done on Brewing, Brewing TV, the Brewing TV Network. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'll put it on the screen. Um, uh, some, one of the, somebody from... Uh, DIYbeer.com, the Mr. Beer Coopers slash whatever um, company. And he was, uh, had a lot of information that I didn't know about that now I, can, I will be able to share with you when I do the kit. I, um, if I had done the kit already, I wouldn't have been able to you know, share this. So while I'm making the thing up, I'll be able to share some information about how they've changed the... Um, formulation of the kit and how uh, Cooper's now makes the liquid malt extract. Did you know that Cooper's is the number one producer of liquid malt extract in the world? I didn't know that. Let's face it, and they know this. They He talked about this. I'll put a link to the um, to the interview down in the bottom there. It's the sort of the last half of the interview. You know, Mr. Beer kits in the past and even maybe even now are sort of, you know, poo-pooed, uh, frowned upon by advanced brewers, um, you know, they get the eye roll, you know, is what they described on the interview. And they're trying to get away from that. They're trying to improve the quality of the kits 
to the point where it's just because it's a two and only a two gallon batch doesn't mean it's not a good extract beer. So they talked about that. And, and you know what? I, I urge you to listen to that before you watch my Mr. Beer Kit review, because that way you won't be laughing at me and wondering why I did a Mr. Beer Kit. Well, first of all, it was sent to me as a gift. So of course I'm going to do it. And I, I appreciate it. And you know what? They also talk about the fact that, you know, you don't have to use the Mr. Beer fermenter, which is that barrel shaped thing. You can use it to brew small batches of all grain. You can br use it to brew small batches of cider. Uh, anything like that. It's a great little fermenter. It's got the tap. It's got an airlock system. And it's, you know, it's perfect for doing small batches of beer. If you want to do an experiment, a recipe that you're not sure you want to try on a large scale, whether it be a cider, whether it be a, an all-grain beer or an extract or whatever, um, it's a great little fermenter. And it's, I think they only charge, I think he said $10 or something for the fermenter itself. You can buy it on the DIYbeer.com site. Put a link down below f uh, for you if you want to look for that. Um, so look at it's 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 looking like, and, and they're not aiming at selling this product as you know as a a serious. I mean, let's it's it's something like it's like you don't know what to buy your father for Christmas or your uncle or your brother or your friend. You know you don't know, you know it's a birthday. You're not sure what to get him. You can buy him a tie. You can buy him some cologne. It's like does he like beer? Yeah. Well. Hey, buy him a Mr. Beer Kit. He'll have some fun in the kitchen making some, have some of his own beer. And you never know, he might actually decide to get serious and buy some some bigger equipment and do it do a big big uh, on the big scale. Um, I still think that you know it's important to keep new subscribers to my channel interested in you know getting started in home brewing. And I think the doing the Mr. Beer Kit here on YouTube is going to be a good way to do that. Okay, so that's what we've got with that. Now I think that's about all I've got for you this week. <clears throat> Delicious! Oh man, that's so good. Well, as far as myself goes, updates. Um, I got a new cassette deck. Oh, if you're into vintage, vintage audio equipment, take a look at this. I got this for $20 off of Kijiji. Now, I used to, I have this tape deck here. This is a TAC. I paid 20 bucks for it at Value Village, a thrift store. And I've been trying to get it to sound good, and I just can't. It, it's not, the, it's not, it's, I'm sure it's just worn out. You know, the heads are worn out or something, you know. There's bad capacitors or something's going on inside that's just not sounding good anymore. So I saw this baby on Kijiji. Look at that. Analog meters. It's a Sony. And this thing sounds fantastic. This Friday on my live broadcast on justin.tv slash craigtube, we're going to take a listen to this cassette deck. Um, I don't know what I'm going to record yet, but I'll record something onto a cassette and then we'll we'll play it back on my cast and we'll take a listen to how wonderful this thing sounds. Okay, The reason why I bought it is because I want to convert a lot of my vinyl, some of my, my really vintage, pristine vinyl, like the Fleetwood Mac Rumors album. I don't want to take it out of the sleeve any more than I have to. That thing is like you know, it's one of my prized possessions, along with some other ones in there as well. Uh, pieces of vinyl that I don't like taking out of the sleeves because every time you do, there's a new click or piece of dust or something that gets on it. So I've got a bunch of, I've got a bunch of these, and uh, I'm going to start, um, arch you know, sort of recording some of my best vinyl onto these, so I can listen to them, and and not worry about you know, cleaning it and skipping and clicking and popping and getting the vinyl worn out. And this tape deck I just showed you sounds good enough that I'm confident I'm going to get great sound uh, off of uh, the vinyl onto these cassettes. 
That is cool. It's not beer related, but I'll be drinking a beer while I'm archiving the records, so I guess you could say it is. All right, well, I think I'm, I've spent my time on here. Um, I think I'm out of time. Thank you so much for watching. Do join my Friday night cast. More on this beer in, the in a very near future video. It's a brown ale. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Have a good Thursday. Have a good Wednesday. Have a good Thursday. Have a good Friday. And with any luck, we'll see you on my broadcast on Friday. We'll have a great time. Drink a few. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Be safe.